It's hard to say whether. Oh, the. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, just like that. See? That's bonkers. I can't do that. I, I can't do that. Uh, this is the sound of me questioning everything that I think I know. There are a lot of exciting things about the new HD Zero goggles, but one of the most exciting things about them, if you are a user of HD Zero, is the new 90 frame per second nano camera from HD Zero. And my first thought when I heard about this camera was 90 frame per second, big freaking deal. DJI will do 120 frames per second. Walksnail will do 100 frames per second. High frame rate FPV is not anything new and or revolutionary. But HD Zero has something unique that no other FPV system has done before it. And that is that it can offer a low latency, high frame rate experience. And those two things together might just make a big freaking difference. In fact, I know for a fact that they do make a big freaking difference because this is the second time I've recorded this video. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're gonna learn something today. Jesus, it is windy. It is a beautiful day. It is literally, it's 60 degrees here, Fahrenheit, obviously. 60 degrees here, the middle of January, and it feels like it's the beginning of March because that's when the wind gets like this. I don't know why I'm shouting. I'm wearing a mic. I don't need to shout. My God, it's gonna be cold next week, I'm sure, but right now, by God, it's such a beautiful day. I gotta fly, right? This new 90 FPS camera can operate in a couple of different modes. And in order to demonstrate that, we're gonna put the throttle at 50% and then we're gonna push all the way to the right. Y'all yeah, right. And that's gonna put us into the camera control menu. We can then use the right stick to go down to the video mode. There's a lot of other camera options here as well, uh, but we're not gonna be tweaking those just yet. And we can see that we are in 960 by 720 at 60 FPS modes. The other modes we could be in include 540p60, 54090 crop, and 54090. That is the mode that I'm most interested to try today. But for now, let's just stay at 960 by 720, 60. This is the standard HD zero experience. Let's give this camera a fly and see how it performs and then we will try the other stuff. The video transmitter that I'm using is the HD01 watt Freestyle VTX. Of course, it is at max power. And I have got a TBS Triumph antenna on it. Uh, oldie but a goodie. It's a, a brand new and in good condition. Just found it in a drawer. Uh, the goggles, as you can see, have the TrueRC X-Air combo on front of them. And I have got my patch antennas facing, facing the house. So actually like uh, the worst possible combination in terms of range and penetration, which uh, just sitting that way because that's where I wanted to set up my camera because the lighting, we're just gonna make the best of it. So when I go through here, this is like uh, the worst possible way it could be, uh, but it did okay. I'm pretty close to that location. Whereas when I fly here, I'm gonna get breakup because the house is between me and the quad, but uh, that's where the patches are pointed. So that's kind of uh, making the best of it. And we're doing fine. And this uh, 720p60, this is the sort of standard HD zero experience. And you can judge what you think of the camera in terms of this new nano camera. Uh, some people think that the lens that's on it could be improved. I'll tell you more about that later when we talk about that 540p crop mode. Uh, but this is a pretty, typical HD zero experience in terms of the camera and in terms of the latency, the VTX. And to be honest with you, this has never knocked my socks off. Uh, the, uh, the reason it's never knocked my socks off is that for me at least, the advantage of the lower latency, which is demonstrably true and factual, is not offset by the reduction in image resolution and quality. For example, if I was doing this with DJI, I could have seen those tree branches as I was coming over the house with a lot more detail and had a little more confidence to sort of dive in there and try to avoid them. But if I do this with HD zero, it's, you just don't see as much. Um, let's land and switch to 540p 90 mode and see if that changes. 
I said that this was the second time I recorded this video, and the reason is that when I recorded the first video, I didn't use this camera at all. I recorded the whole video on the HD0 camera. I thought that would be a clever way to do the video. And the problem with that is that when you switch from 540p60 to 540p90, uh, there was a bug in the DVR, or maybe it was user error, I'm not sure, but all of my 90 FPS footage was ruined, and it's a shame because you will never recapture the very first experience you have, the sort of sincere emotional reaction of that very first time that something like this happens to you. I want to share a little bit of that audio with you just so you can, like, get it. It's hard to say whether, oh, the, oh, oh, it's smoother. <gasps> wow. It's smoother. Wow. Uh, 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 flip. Uh, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, this is the sound of me questioning everything that I think I know. This is what 720p looks like. And this is about as good as it gets. I have carefully focused this camera, cleaned the lens, and done everything I can to give HD0 as much image quality as it's capable of showing you. Without moving the camera, now let's switch it to uh, 540p at 90 frames per second and see how much resolution we lose. And here is 540p 90. Now, you're not gonna be able to see the 90 frames per second. This is a limitation of YouTube, and there's nothing I can do about it. I can only show you this footage at 60 FPS. So you're gonna have to take my word for it when I tell you about the smoothness and feel, but the difference in resolution is pretty freaking obvious. Like, look over here at the branches on the trees or the brick wall, and HT0 doesn't have a ton of resolution to start with. I still think this is on par or better than analog, but maybe not like a really high uh, TV line analog camera. And that's a shame because this 90 frame per second mode is a total freaking game changer. What blew me away while I was flying it the first time was I just started coming through here and doing some tight power loops around here and like, I just can't believe how much precision and control I feel like I have to just dive in there. Uh, it's a little unfair because it's a windy day and I don't know if I'm gonna recreate that experience, but it's bananas. See, normally here, if I wasn't lined up right, I would just bail, I would have to bail out. I couldn't just make these quick adjustments to get in. I'm trying to demonstrate it and I'm screwing it up. It's bananas. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Uh, after that, I went over here to this object, this little obstacle here and did some power loops. And again, normally when I do these, if I start to come around and I'm not lined up right, like right about there, if I wasn't perfectly lined up, I would just wave off and I would just find something else to do. I would fake it. I'd do that freestyle thing you do where you go, ah, I didn't want to do that anyway. I'm going to do a different move, right? But I just feel so much more confident to dive in and do shit like that. Am I, did I stutter? I didn't plan that. I just was like, eh, we're just going in. We're going in, boys. And it worked. I just could do it. and. I just don't have that confidence when flying other systems. I just, ah, oh, oh, oh. okay, low battery. I gotta change battery. I'm gonna kill this battery. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's not the same as the first time, but I'm just as freaking excited. That's bonkers. <laughs> This result really confuses me because I have flown low latency systems before. Analog has latency as low as 16 milliseconds. HD zero has latency as low as 60 milliseconds. And I have never flown them and gone, holy crap, I really feel a difference. 
even flying them back to back with DJI. And DJI has high frame rate, 100 or 120 frames per second. So you get smoothness, but it has high latency, higher latency, and it has inconsistent latency. And my theory is that the reason this feels so freaking different to me is that it's the first time I have flown a combination of a low latency and high frame rate system at the same time. And like the scientific mind in me wants to say, well, it could be placebo. We can't draw any conclusions until we have a double blind test. And okay, take it with a grain of salt, but my, my God, I absolutely feel so much more confident and in control when flying the 90 FPS camera, well, HC0, than any video link I've ever flown before. And people who fly HD0 are saying, yeah, that's what we like about it. And I know, but this is the threshold for me. 60 FPS HD0 compared to DJI, like I know it's lower latency. I know that it has consistent smooth, but I just, I would choose to fly DJI and feel like I can get more done with it. But this is over the threshold where I go, holy crap, that's a big difference. Let's fly it again. To be honest, a windy day like this is kind of the perfect day to test us out because the wind is gonna force me to make last minute adjustments. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'll tell myself. See, like I wasn't lined up there and I just was like, hey, I got this. I was a little low. Uh, uh, still, I still suck. Uh, you know, that's not gonna change, but. Let's just dive into these trees, who cares? Yeah, we're good. Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? So you just get on the throttle there and catch at the end. You know, it's no, oh, my video has gotten worse. My video has gotten worse. I think I messed up my antenna. Let me turn my head a little bit. I think I messed up somewhere in one of those crashes. In my previous video where the DVR was messed up and I had to throw it out, was I recreated a trick that I almost did by accident and then was like, oh, that sounds fun. I should try that someday. And it was flying down this way and then coming over here and then lining it up just right to dive through that gap in the fence. I'm gonna to try to do that again with the DVR going properly this time. Oh yeah, just like that. Okay, no problem. <laughs> See, I figured out the, I figured out the entry point, I guess. Uh, oh, see, I just feel so much more confident to dive into spots like that when it's not quite lined up. I feel so much more confident that I can make a last minute correction. Not that time, but I make a last minute correction and just make it happen. I've never felt that before. No matter, that's too, too, too late, i to dive sooner. No matter how much the promise was. See, that's bonkers. I can't do that. I, I can't do that. Okay, that one, I just gave myself some extra time. Yeah, see, just go in, go to the hole. Jesus, this is bonkers. What else is there to say? The 540p60 mode. I can't demonstrate that for you yet because it's not supported in firmware. It will be soon, we'll take a look at it. What's the point? Why would I give myself less resolution and less frame rate? Why wouldn't, because when you give stuff up, you get stuff in exchange. When you go from uh, 720p60 to 540p 90, you lose resolution, but you gain frame rate and latency. When you go from 720p 60 to 540p 60, you give up resolution and frame rate. What do you get back? You get back range, you get increased range. So for those who don't feel HC0 has as much range and penetration as they would want, that's what the 540p 60 mode will be for. And I'll be testing that out when it's available. The other thing uh, is the uh, 540p 690 crop. And what that does is it just crops in a little bit, reduces your field of view. The main reason they put this in here is because some people take the run cam, nano cam lens 
and they put it on the 90 FPS nano cam and they think it gives a better image quality than the stock lens, but it also increases the field of view. So the 540p crop just crops in on the sensor just a little bit to bring that field of view back down if you swap out the lens for a wider one. I was not exaggerating when I said that this makes me question everything I think I know about FPV. That's a good thing. I'm happy about that. I'm always excited to have something shake up my expectations. It just doesn't happen very often for whatever reason. And I just feel like I'm a better pilot flying this exact camera and this exact VTX than anything I've flown before, including analog, including DJI. And I am going to be thinking hard about whether I will definitely be building one of my perfect freestyle builds, I'm gonna take the Vista out of it and put uh, HD Zero Freestyle in it and see how that works for me. There's other considerations, including durability and so forth, range, penetration, I needed more testing, but by God, I am, for the first time, personally convinced that the claims about HD Zero making you a better pilot are true for me. And that hasn't been true until today. Um, if you want to know more about these goggles, I have a full review of these goggles. It's out on my channel. I'll put a card on screen. This, this is where you want to be if you are serious about HD Zero, but also if you're serious about Walksnail and analog. Yeah, you got to watch that video. Happy flying.